Hello and welcome back to the Healthcare Uncomplicated YouTube channel. Before I proceed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check all the previous content there for you. And today I have another magnificent guest and an interesting topic for you. And we have Dr. Avid Zur. We are having a very interesting topic today. We are addressing virtual obstetrics care. And can you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your role, please? So today we'll be focusing on my role in uh, uh, OBGYN and beyond and our uh, virtual care services for reproductive health. This is a journey we started more than a year ago with the primary mission of providing maternal fetal telemedicine. That's providing higher standard of care for high-risk pregnant women at their homes. Oh, fantastic. And moving on, can you tell us a bit more about the virtual obstetric program you offer at Shiba? So women that have a, a complicated pregnancy, what we call high-risk pregnancy, need uh, intense care. Some of them need to come from 32 weeks of uh, pregnancy once a week. Some of them have to come even twice a week or even be admitted to our antipartum uh, departments. When, you, uh, when, you, when they arrive, they need to see a midwife, need to do ultrasound, need to see an obstetrician or MFM, um, traveling, searching for parking, waiting between the clinical stations. It takes altogether around four hours. Women that are admitted to the department, of course, they are there 24 seven. Our uh, mission was to provide the same care, the same surveillance for mother and fetus, but do it at home. Brilliant, fantastic. And what do you perceive as the biggest benefits of virtual obstetric programs? So the three major benefits for, and it depends on the scenario, for women that are receiving ambulatory care, those that need to come once or twice a week, it improves their ability to continue their lives, they continue their careers, continue being with the families, that's one scenario. The other scenario is women that are admitted to the department. Yeah, it's a real game changer. Instead of being with us for five, six weeks with the families visiting them once or twice a week, they just continue their lives. Some of them even continue working. It's a total game changer. And then the third benefit is for us as a leading medical center. We want to provide our care, our innovation to women that are beyond our closest vicinity. And being able to provide remote care allows us now to treat women everywhere in Israel and actually everywhere in the world. Fantastic. Well, certainly virtual care is the way forward. And it's very important what you mentioned there. Carry on with your, let's say, daily life and daily activity with less disruption as possible. Moving on, can you tell us a bit more about the patient perspective how are they accepting hybrid care? And what feedback are you hearing? So the person perspective is uh, definitely fascinating. So the first part is uh, trust. So we didn't talk about the technical details or technology, but in the first moment, most patients don't even believe we are able to provide ultrasound at home or fetal monitoring at home or uh, continuous glucose monitoring at home. These all, all these things may sound kind of uh, imaginary. So the first step is uh, gaining their trust. And uh, uh, what we do is we have a kind of a unique room where the women that enroll to our program uh, are able to see the technology, but not only see the technologies, but actually also perceive the way we see them when they are at home. So we connect them to the fetal monitoring and they, we, they see how we can follow the fetal monitoring. That's the changes in the fetus heart rate when they're at home. Then we let them do an ultrasound and they see what we see on our side when they're doing ultrasound at home. So once they gain a trust in our technologies, in our team, and perhaps most importantly in themselves, being able to do all these things by themselves at home, comes uh, the next step, 
um, and that's the first visit. So the first visit is always kind of, uh, I think uh, there's always some concern for every patient. They want to see everything works. But then once the first visit goes through, they see everything's working. The visit that used to take four hours takes altogether 30, 40 minutes. They start gaining trust and then become addicted to it. Well, it's certainly um, uh, less time consuming, but very important what you mentioned, getting that first trust. And also is a change. Uh, as human beings, anything that is uh, uh, new or changing, we always have to experience uh, for the first time. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing that. Are you aware of other um, programs such as yours around the world? Well, definitely, I, I'd say a few things. First, in general, definitely, that's where the world will be going to. So remote care and telemedicine isn't new. And the challenge with our field is treating remotely two patients, both the mother and the fetus. And for that reason, there are not too many programs that were able to achieve it. There's one, uh, uh, we have colleagues in the Netherlands that are uh, um, pioneering remote care there. They've been treating uh, pregnant women at home uh, even before we started. However, they um, adopted only some of the technologies. For instance, they do remote fetal monitoring, but they, right. um, on the other hand, uh, there's also a group, a very good group uh, at UPenn that's also pioneering a remote care at home. But again, um, they're currently focusing on one aspect, that's the remote fetal monitoring at home. Um, to the best of our knowledge, we are the first group that's really looking into comprehensive remote care that's integrating different technologies and the idea is not our thought is not about the technology we love technology yes but our thought is not about technology but actually how it can serve the women in receiving comprehensive care at their homes brilliant why do you think is the reason for not having many established uh, remote uh, monitoring programs well you know in general pregnancy is a place uh, people are uh, concerned of innovation. There's liability, there's medical legal, um, and there are two patients, uh, making it even more complicated. Um, on the other hand, the need is great. The need is great. And I must say, it's hard to find better uh, people to work with uh, than pregnant women. They are young, um, they seek innovation, they learn quickly. And I think from that point of view, if you look, you know, on all medicine, pregnancy is a, is a great place for adapting new technologies. As long as it's done uh, carefully and safely, step by step. Sure. Thank you so much. We have some questions after uh, about safety and uh, the effective use and everything. And I do agree with you that uh, certain the, the, the female population about the younger uh, pregnancy uh, ladies, they are open minded. I really like that, that uh, what you said, that is actually a very good match for innovation because they open minded to to change, they open minded to try different things. Moving on. What was Sheba's medical center motivation to do this significant transformation? You know, I, I can think it's true about um, all transformation at Sheba Medical Center. What we're seeking is to improve healthcare around the world and seeking global impact. Um, it's not about uh, immediate uh, improving our revenue or immediate branding it's really about the long-term uh, impact in transforming healthcare and uh, you know sometimes it's frustrating when you go for these big moves you have struggle with uh, reimbursement you have a uh, struggle with uh, integrating new technologies into a large medical center but the long-term uh, impact and you already start we're starting to feel it with this program is worth the is worth the effort. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I, I like that the the, the 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 true impact and the long term impact. You know, so uh, that's brilliant. And another interesting question, I believe, for you is how do you envision obstetric care? 
So I think a lot of things, if, if an obstetrician that, you know, retired uh, in uh, 1980 would now return to work, he could uh, uh, quite quickly uh, fit in. Um, however, I think the next two, three years are going to be very transformative in our discipline. Things are moving quickly and there are many reasons for it. I think the first and most important reason is that uh, uh, um, there's, there's, there's a great movement of femtech and innovation in women's health. And, you know, um, I've been in this field for more than 10 years and I, and I feel people are, are eager more than ever, both patients and caregivers to, to adopt change. And I think that the two, the next two, three years are going to be really, uh, we're going to see very large transformation in everything, in precision medicine, in uh, adopting technologies, in changing uh, clinical paradigms. And it's not going to be limited only to pregnancy or to fertility or to, it's going to be all across. And, you know, if in many ways, we are currently lagging behind uh, oncology and uh, cardiology and innovation. I think uh, the next two, three years, we're going to be taking the lead. Brilliant. That's certainly very um, good news for the industry. And, and things are happening very, very fast. Uh, things are evolving and there's a lot of new technology. And of course, not a big buzz about generative AI and everything coming together and we are actually experiencing a new level of maturity in innovation that is matching the adoption to start with so that is great news moving on how was home ultrasound technology advanced in recent years and what features make it suitable for remote pregnancy monitoring so so definitely um the advance of uh remote ultrasound. Specifically, we are using a technology of an Israeli company called Parson Moore. Um, and I tell you what are the uh, uh, leaps that that allow this allow us to to use these technologies. One thing is price. Uh, so small ultrasound probes exist for many years, but they used to be very expensive. Mm. So uh, one important change is a price that allows us to provide every patient with with her own probe she can take for the full pregnancy that's one thing the other thing is uh, um, being able to provide ultrasound online so the patient sees what she's doing but also we on our side the physicians or currently at Chiba, we are using ultrasound techs already for remote care ultrasound so the patient the ultrasound tech both can see the same image and the ultrasound tech can also see the patient and guide her where the probe should be located, how her hand should be moving. So um, better pricing, the simultaneous three-channel video, uh, these are the great leaps. And I expect there are going to be additional leaps. Again, uh, uh, leveraging AI and other technologies that allow us to assess much more than we can even now at home. Brilliant. Thank you so much. We're talking about Pulse and More uh, technology. I was also fascinated by it, by seeing actually the accessibility, but also that component of uh, true remote uh, patient care, you know. So, and it's a little bit more than that. It's also like a self care, uh, is a new model of care embedded in that, not just the technology. So, things are, um, yeah, things are moving really fast. Um, what are the potential benefits and challenges associated with utilizing home ultrasound devices for remote pregnancy monitoring, both from the perspective of the healthcare providers and the expectant parents? So I tell you, from, from our point of view, the most important thing is the ability to promise a patient when we see, it doesn't matter if we see her in clinic or at home, what's this kind of a deal between us right we tell her you come next week or in two weeks or whatever but what we promise without even saying it is that when you come in two weeks your fetus will be okay you'll be feeling well and uh, to do so we need to be able to assess that 
And uh, uh, what we do is we integrate the ultrasound image with the monitoring to create to uh, to create something that's been described in the obstetric literature many years ago. It's called the modified biophysical score. That's uh, connecting the amniotic, amniotic fluid amniotic fluid amount. We call it the deepest vertical pocket, which you know when the fetus pees, it means it feels well. And the amniotic fluid kind of measures is pee, not the meat, not not the immediate urination, but actually urination in the past day. And uh, uh, fetal monitoring uh, provides us information about his current status, how right now, and integrating the fetal monitoring with the uh, uh, fetal ultrasound, deepest vertical pocket, provides us very good reassurance with a very low, uh, uh, there's, there's a term called negative predictive value and positive predictive value in medicine. That means if you say everything's okay, what is uh, uh, your positive predictive value? And if you say there's no problem, what is your negative predictive value? So we have a very good uh, negative pr predictive value when we say everything's okay, uh, when we integrate the fetal monitor with the fetal ultrasound, and the, that's the most important use, more than everything else. Brilliant, F fantastic. And the, the, moving on to the last end of the show, now, how does the integration of home ultrasound technology in remote pregnancy monitoring contribute to increase accessibility to potential care and what consideration should be taken into account to ensure its safety and effectiveness in usage? Okay, so actually there were two questions here, right? One is uh, uh, reaching patients that we don't reach, that we currently are not reaching. And this really depends on the scenario. So, you know, in the United States, uh, there's so many uh, women that uh, don't, don't have coverage. Right, they don't have insurance, they don't have coverage. I'm not sure technology will solve that part. But there are other patients uh, all around the world that do have coverage, but they have to be at work or have to be with the children. And that's the reason they don't come to all surveillance they're required or to some of the surveillance they're required. And being able to treat them at their homes or at the work um, would be a great contribution to improving uh, care um, across populations. Yeah.